Hi everyone, this is Josh Kulp. We are learning Daf Shui. We're on Daf Yud Dalid of Masecha Gitin. Um, and there's a fascinating example here. You might call it doublespeak. You might call it irony. I don't know what you want to call it, but I'll explain to you what it is and why I think it's interesting. Uh, the Gemara is trying to find a reason for why the, uh, the, uh, a Kenyan a acquisition done in the presence of three parties, the original creditor, the original borrower, and a third party to whom the creditor wants to switch the credit, uh, works without a formal act of kinyan, meaning there's no other formalities. If he just says it in front of the three people, then the switch of the debt works. And the Gemara struggles to find a reason for that. Actually, I think they find some very good reasons. They just don't work perfectly. And then it, it says here, uh, Marzutra says, these are three things that the rabbis made as a halacha with no reason. Lists that one. The second one is somebody who writes all of his, um, ascribes all of his property to his wife. He's only made her into a guardian, meaning she doesn't own the property. She just has rights to use it as she sees fit. Uh, but she can't give it away to other people. Uh, and the third one is somebody who marries off uh, his um, son in, in a certain home, in a house. Uh, the son has acquired the home in which he was married. And again, the Gemara says these are halachot, these are laws that have no reason. And what I think is interesting here is that there is always a, a, a sort of a dance, I think, between this is just the way we do things and a search for the reason for why we do things. The reasons always fall a little short, uh, but that doesn't mean that the laws don't exist. Again, these aren't usually always rules. They're usually rules. Uh, and the toast will jump right in here. The medieval commentators jump right in here, and they say, of course there's a reason for all these things. Um, and they provide a reason. One of them for the issue of the Kenyan in the presence of all three people is that so they don't have to do other more formal acts of Kenyan because sometimes it just helps to be able to transfer debt easily. Uh, in the case of writing money to uh, a wife, uh, the reason is obvious. The husband has given his wife all of his property so that she can do fit with it, eventually giving it to their children and not giving it to, let's say, the son or a child from another marriage. That's probably not the husband's intention. Uh, and uh, the reason for the house is that uh, that's just the way that we can assume that the husband, the, the father who married off the uh, son in a house, wanted, at least this was reflective of the reality of their time, wanted to transfer uh, that house to the son. We, today, that doesn't make so much sense to us, but obviously that would have made sense in the Talmud. It wouldn't have had a reason. There's really no such thing, certainly in the realm of legal and money uh, transfers, there's no real such thing as a halacha that has no reason whatsoever. Uh, uh, and probably in almost all realms, there's no reason for uh, a, a halachic to exist if it has no reason whatsoever. And that's essentially what the Tosfer is saying. Uh, we can always strive to find reasons for things, but coupling that along with the Gemara, I think what they're trying to say is, even if these reasons don't apply perfectly, meaning there are exceptions, there are some, uh, let's say, uh, kinks in the armor of the reasoning for this halacha, it doesn't mean that we abrogate that halacha. Uh, the halacha continues we might uh, try to find reasons that are imperfect. The halacha continues, but that doesn't mean there is no such thing as really to the Tosvot, a halacha that has no uh, reasoning whatsoever.